The Trump administration out with a big announcement today, allowing states to impose work requirements for Medicaid recipients. The guidance by the administration opens the door for states to cut off benefits to those uh, who don't have jobs, aren't in school, aren't caregivers, or who don't participate in volunteer work. Federal Medicaid officials said the work requirements would be similar to those implemented in other entitlement programs like food stamps and welfare. Medicaid covers more than 70 million people, making it the largest government health insurance program. But according to a Kaiser Family Foundation analysis, only 60% of people are working who are on Medicaid, and they actually work really hard. So is this a good move, and will it impact you joining me now, associate professor of economics at the King's College, right here in New York City. Brian Breitberg, this is Brian Nom Brianomics. Uh, so people are in favor of work requirements yeah. for Medicaid. A majority of people. Oh yeah, this is politically. This is one issue where people line up, both Democrats and Republicans, and it makes sense. You know, we think about all the money the federal government spends on welfare, all the money the government spends on benefits. People say, look, if you're going to get a benefit, if you're going to get some of my tax money, at least work if you're able to work. So when you ask the public, are you in favor of Medicaid work requirements? Yep. As long as somebody's not disabled, as long as they're not a caregiver or elderly, yes, go. To to work it by the way it's good for your health yeah. to work it's good to be out there in the community doing things yeah they, they show that there's a much lower incidence of incident of depression yeah for people who are working even though you know it, it can be very consuming and, and hard on your soul to go back to the grindstone every single day you're less likely to suffer from debilitating forms of depressive illness well one of the biggest issues in this country is, is isolation we have problems of isolation and so being at the workplace yeah work is hard but it's good to be out there with other people it's good to be serving customers and so I think a lot of people support it for that reason but the other piece of this is and you mentioned it 60 percent of Medicaid recipients already work yeah. so they're not going to be affected and most of the rest are probably going to fall under one of these exclusions we're talking about when it comes to being elderly or disabled so it's or not going to disrupt that many people um, but also when you talk about long-term disability yeah. that's another track that you would go down as far as government reimbursement it's not just Medicaid but Medicaid has been so vastly expanded and yeah. it gobbles up 350 billion dollars a year and we have we have 70 mil almost 70 million people on this program and yeah. I think a lot of people also say we don't want that many people having to depend on the government for their health care let's get them into positions where if they're working they're making connections maybe they can start to work their way out of this system yeah. it's this is not the desired end goal you know we yeah. talk about these things like their entitlements like they're never gonna go away but really in a good just prosperous society you don't want that many people depending on the government well, and, and you look at places like Maine and Alaska and it, it has been so problematic in those states because they are economically depressed and their senators tend to vote like Democrats because of things like Medicaid but this isn't a top-down federal mandate mm -hmm. this allows states to experiment on their own with their own work requirements yeah I mean exactly this isn't this isn't a, the federal government saying you're all gonna change your Medicaid requirements it's saying if you're a state that thinks you have a better way to deal with folks who are in this program then we're gonna let you experiment we're gonna put some guardrails in place to make sure that this doesn't disadvantage the elderly or disabled yeah. but otherwise see what works that's how federalism is supposed to work these little experiments in the state that help us get a sense for what kind of policies actually help people I just it blows my mind that the critics here can't see that that's what's happening and that we have the possibility to discover better ways to help people there are that's better ways about. and if, if there's less bureaucracy and less uh, fewer of those top-down edicts then maybe the sin the system will be a little bit more streamlined well, I mean is that is that really too much to ask not only streamlined but effective I mean yeah. the point the point here is to help people get off of these programs. It's not to keep them on them yeah. in a more efficient way. It's to get off. And so you want to find the policies that get people back on their feet and able to provide for themselves and the people that are in their charge. And I say amen to that. That's exactly what we want people. Amen. To do. Brian Brenberg, Brian Nomics right here. You heard it first. Thank you so much yeah. for being here. Nice to see you.